If you're tired of waiting for Starship's first orbital flight only to have it end up blowing up, SpaceX won't make you wait too much longer for Starship's next flight. Elon Musk even promised that SpaceX can get four flights out this year, or maybe even five. While this timeline may seem overly ambitious, it's difficult to gauge the limits of the SpaceX team. So when will SpaceX launch the second Starship orbital flight? And how will SpaceX's next flight differ from the first? All this and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The 120-meter Starship, the biggest and most powerful rocket ever built, launched on its debut flight on April 20th, rising into the sky from Starbase, SpaceX's site on South Texas's Gulf Coast. The flight aimed to send Starship's upper stage on a partial trip around the Earth with a targeted Pacific Ocean splashdown near Hawaii about 90 minutes after liftoff. The end came much sooner than that, however. Starship suffered several problems that impelled SpaceX to engage the vehicle's flight termination system, which destroyed the vehicle four minutes after launch. Still, SpaceX has declared the test flight a success, noting that Starship got off the ground well and ultimately reached a maximum altitude of 39 kilometers. And according to company founder and CEO Elon Musk, SpaceX's giant Starship vehicle could even be ready for its second ever liftoff off in just a few short months. Basically, the outcome was roughly sort of what I expected and maybe slightly exceeded my expectations. SpaceX team did excellent work. We made a lot of progress, and I think from a broadcast standpoint and from a pad standpoint, we are probably ready to launch in six to eight weeks. He is cautiously optimistic about the next launch attempt, which will repeat the same mission profile. Super heavy launches and lands in the Gulf of Mexico, Starship separates, nearly reaches orbital velocity, and then returns into the Pacific Ocean north of Hawaii. Our goal for the next flight is make it to staging and hopefully succeed in staging and get to orbit, he said. I think we've got a decent shot of getting to orbit on the next flight. I think this time we've got a better than 50% chance of reaching orbit. I'm hopeful we can get four flights out this year or maybe five. I would be surprised if we exit this year without getting to orbit, he said giving the company an 80% plus probability of doing so, increasing to nearly 100% within 12 months. The goal of these initial flights is to continue to gather information about the performance of Super Heavy and Starship. After the launch system can reliably reach orbit, the next phase of the program will involve demonstrating in-space fuel transfer and beginning to land and reuse both the booster and upper stages. It'll probably take us a few more years to achieve reusability on a regular basis where we bring bring the booster back and bring the ship back, he said. It'll take a few years to get to where Falcon 9 is today, where it is quite normal for the rocket to land. Regardless, Musk also acknowledged that closing out work with the Federal Aviation Administration on the flight termination system and taking other measures necessary for a launch license may take longer. The longest lead item is probably requalification of the flight termination system. That's obviously something that we want to make sure of before proceeding with the next flight, Musk said. But there was some good news. The vehicle's structural margins appear to be better than we expected, Musk said. As we can tell, the vehicle is actually doing somersaults towards the end and still staying intact. The next launch will use a super heavy booster called Booster 9, but he said the company had not decided which of the Starship upper stages will fly. The engines on Booster 9, which is next, are much newer and more consistent and with significant reliability improvements, he said, along with improved shielding. I think we'll see a much more robust engine situation with Booster 9. Booster 9 is a lot easier because we use electric motors to steer the engines as opposed to hydraulic actuators, where you've got a common manifold between the hydraulic actuators, Musk said. The electric actuated engines will be much more isolated. It will be key to ensure that any single engine failures are isolated, and the company has made the rocket more robust for this purpose. If you have extremely good engine isolation and an engine fails, it does not cause a failure of neighboring engine or the stage itself, Musk said. Because then, if you lose one of the 33 engines, that's a 3% thrust loss. It's not a big deal. If you do not have good engine isolation, then an engine failure can domino to other engines or to parts of the stage. Then you have an extremely unreliable design. Super Heavy Booster 9, which finished its own round of proof tests earlier this month, rolled out of its Starbase assembly bay and headed to the launch site on December 15th of 2022. 
The Super Heavy prototype ultimately completed two partial cryogenic proof tests on December 21st and on the 29th, during which it was likely loaded with around a thousand tons of liquid nitrogen to simulate explosive liquid oxygen and methane propellant. Booster 9 then returned to Starbase's factory on January 10th of 2023. Those tests seemed to go well, as B9 received Raptor engine installation. However, thanks to significant design changes and upgrades present on Booster 9, outfitting and testing this Super Heavy could take longer than usual. Many smaller changes are present, but the most significant by far is the addition of an upgraded version of Raptor. The engine's combustion-related hardware is likely the same as the Raptor version 2 engines present on Booster 7, Ship 24, and Ship 25. But the hardware used to steer each engine, called Thrust Vector Control, or TVC, has been completely changed. Instead of using a complex web of plumbing and hydraulic power units bolted to the side of Super Heavy, Booster 9's 13th Central Raptors will be electrically steered. That has allowed SpaceX to remove those power units streamlining Booster 9's exterior and reducing the already rat's nest of plumbing required to fuel, control, power, and steer dozens of high-performance rocket engines on one booster. SpaceX has been testing electric Raptor TVC for months at its McGregor, Texas development facilities, but it's unclear if the new technology has progressed to the point that 13 upgraded engines are ready to be installed on Booster 9. In the meantime, SpaceX may install Booster 9's fixed outer ring of 20 Raptor version 2 engines, none of which gimbal or need new electric TVC hardware. Once all 33 engines are installed, it's likely that Booster 9 will be thoroughly tested to ensure that all 13 electrically steered engines work well together before, during, and after numerous static fire tests. SpaceX will also need to verify that the batteries likely powering those new systems function as expected. During the peak stresses they will likely experience, the electric TVC would need to rapidly redirect more than 3,000 tons or around 6.6 .6 million pound force of thrust multiple times per second. The peak power required for Super Heavy's batteries will likely be immense as a result. The peak power required from Super Heavy's batteries will likely be immense as a result. For now, the start of Super Heavy B9's own static fire test campaign could be weeks away, and we'll have to wait until Starbase's only orbital launch mount is completed and repaired. However, if Musk's timeline is true, B9 will no longer be able to relax for long. Once again, excitement is guaranteed, Musk said of the next launch. Success is not. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you soon.